uh, back about November 2007, Professor Ian Wellman, Dolly's daddy, owner of Dolly the Sheep, all of a sudden gave up his license to do human cloning. Why would he do that? I mean, this is Mr. Cloning, if you will. Well, because he said, there's a Japanese scientist named Yamanaka. He's come up with this new technique, and it works so much better than trying to do that cloning. <laughs> Cloning's just a dodgy science. He says, I'm going to go with this Yamanaka guy's idea. And a few days later, these headlines appeared in newspapers. Human embryonic stem cells without an embryo. Stem cells without embryos, bypass the need for an embryo. Everyone all of a sudden was turned on to what are called induced pluripotent stem cells. Now pluripotent just means they can make most or all tissues. And they'll say that about embryonic stem cells. In this case, induced, IPS for short. Induced or reprogrammed, because what Yamanaka, the Japanese scientist, found out was he could take just your average ordinary skin cell add a few genes, and that skin cell would now start to act just like an embryonic stem cell. So it's behaving just the same way, except there are no embryos involved. There are no eggs. There's no cloning. You reprogram the cell almost like reprogramming a computer. So it starts a new program and looks and acts like an embryonic stem cell. Yamanaka, in fact, when he was questioned about it, he said, well, neither eggs nor embryos are necessary. I've never worked with either. But when they pushed him and said, well, why did you start this research anyway? He said, well, a colleague invited me over to his lab. I looked through the microscope at this human embryo, and when I saw the embryo, I suddenly realized there was such a small difference between it and my daughter's. And I thought, we can't keep destroying embryos for our research. There must be another way. Well, he came up with another way. And in fact, that field has just exploded. It is easier, cheaper to do. You can take a piece of skin and make these cells. You can make it from any patient to study those cells. There was a paper a few months ago where they took their lab colleague and plucked out one of his hairs, and they made these IPS cells from that hair. So it's easy to do, and they do look and act just like an embryonic stem cell. In fact, Mr. Human Embryonic Stem Cell James Thompson showed that he could do it with human cells. Human skin cell made these embryonic-like stem cells. And he said, well, they meet all our criteria we had before, with the significant exception the IPS cells are not derived from embryos. Another scientist had shown that they could do it in mice. And they were saying, well, they tried to do it with a process called therapeutic cloning. We've heard that one before. But those experiments fail. But this IPS cell technique is amazingly efficient. And in fact, Dr. Thompson, the companies he has set up now, has switched from embryonic stem cells to IPS cells. I do want to switch and talk about the other stem cell that we mentioned earlier on, adult stem cells. Back in 2001, the National Institutes of Health in my country was looking at this stem cell question and all of the science, and it was like they were kind of scratching their head going, well, you know, it wasn't until recently anyone seriously considered the possibility stem cells in adult tissues could make all these other cell types. Now, what we'd heard for years and years and years was, well, there are only a few kinds of adult stem cells in your body. They're hard to find. They're hard to get out. You can't grow them in the lab can't make them form other tissues. They won't repair anything. That's just all old science. In fact, what we know now is there are lots of stem, adult stem cells, and they're much more flexible than we thought. So you're starting down here as this zygote, single-celled embryo. You form that structure called a blastocyst, it's just a later stage embryo, and then the cells start up one of three branches to specialize. Okay or nerve, or brain, or kidney, or something else. But if they get out on the tip, the old idea was, it's like the old cat stuck up the tree and he can't back down. Well, now we know that these adult stem cells are like squirrels that can jump from branch to branch and form other kinds of tissue. And in red here are some, not all, but some of the tissues we now know that contain adult stem cells. It's not a few, it's probably all tissues. 
And in black, some of the tissues we know that can become. We've worked with bone marrow for years and years and years and even done bone marrow transplants. Anybody in here know somebody who's had a bone marrow transplant? Usually there are a few, yeah. Those are adult stem cells they're using. So they've done this for years, but it wasn't until the 1990s they figured out, hey, there's a stem cell here, and that's what's really doing it. So now we'll usually call them stem cell transplants, but it's the same thing, and it's adult stem cells. You can find these, <coughs> excuse me, in lots of places. Bone marrow, the brain, the blood, that umbilical cord blood after the baby's born, even from liposuction fat tissue. Now, if we need an unlimited supply, my country is well off. We've got lots of stem cells to spare. But the point here is, you can find them in almost any tissue, and you can get them to do a lot more than we ever thought possible. The most exciting point, though, to me, is that they work in patients for lots of different diseases. Thousands of patients whose health has been improved, in some cases their lives saved, by adult stem cells. It's not all cures yet. We've never said it's all cures. But treatments and therapies where the patient's health is improved. We've been attacked sometimes, uh, I have, I guess, by people that would say, well, they're not all cures, and those adult stem cells don't work. But we've got the published scientific evidence to back this up. In fact, we've documented 73 different diseases and injuries where adult stem cells, with the published scientific evidence, have been effective at helping human patients. Of course, zero for embryonic. They're usually just giving tumors to rats and mice. In fact, the journal Science, one of the leading scientific journals in the world, finally broke down and actually published this evidence and admitted that, yeah, adult stem cells are doing something. They tried to keep real quiet about it. But I think this is a more impressive Part. Let's look at some of the actual people. This brings it down home. Carol Franz, uh, she calls this her before and after picture. She had multiple myeloma. It's a type of bone marrow cancer where it eats your bones from the inside out. Used her own bone marrow adult stem cells. And she wears these fluorescent shirts around now that say survivor, adult stem cell transplant. Some versions say not embryonic at the bottom. And she talks about being alive today because of adult stem cells, her own adult stem cells. Caitlin McNamara had a whole new functional bladder formed from her own stem cells, adult stem cells, and transplanted in. Jim Herman had leukemia. He ended up using his brother's bone marrow adult stem cells because it was a perfect match. And uh, Jim put this quote in. He said he's now considered cured. Steven Sprague here on the left had a type of leukemia. They told him, well, you got six months and get your affairs together. This was back in 1997. They said, well, wait a minute. We've got some umbilical cord blood stem cells over here we've stored. Let's try that. That was in 1997. Steven's still going strong. And out talking about how umbilical cord blood adult stem cells saved his life. They've been treating even some genetic diseases. Catch this early, soon after birth. You can ameliorate a lot of problems using donated cord blood. It's a whole group of patients that were treated for different anemias and leukemias, sickle cell anemia, all sorts of various conditions with cord blood, adult stem cells. This young fellow hiding his face is Anthony Dones. He was treated for a condition called osteopetrosis, where the marrow fills in with solid bone. Fatal condition. Donated umbilical cord blood stem cells. He's doing fine. They've regrown new jaw bones and new skull bones with adult stem cells. Jackie Raybon is walking again with the aid of braces after her spinal cord injury. Adult stem cells. Now, she's not running any marathons. She admits she's got a ways to go, but she's regained a lot, but it was with her own adult stem cells for this spinal cord treatment. Dennis Turner was treated for Parkinson's. A number of years ago, Dennis was at the point where he could barely feed himself or put his contact lenses in because of the shaking he had from Parkinson's. The doctor treated him with some of his own brain adult stem cells. They took him out, threw him in the lab for a little while, and put him into only half of his brain. 
followed him along for five years. He went almost five years without any Parkinson's symptoms. Now, his Parkinson's has started to come back, and he would like the other half of his brain treated in the meantime, so he can keep going. Doug Rice and Dave Fahey were treated for damage after a heart attack. So just like that little cartoon I showed early on, they use some of their own adult stem cells, put them into the heart, they're doing it just fine now. Some people get better results than others, some almost full recovery. And again, with their own adult stem cells. There are over 2,000 patients around the world now that have had this type of therapy with adult stem cells for heart damage. Jider Abbott here on the left and this young man are some of the first 13 patients successfully treated for juvenile diabetes with their own adult stem cells. Richard Burt here on the right is from Northwestern University near Chicago. He just keeps treating patients. He says, you know, I, I don't really care about the stem cell. I want to see my patients improve. But what I found is that the adult stem cells are the ones that actually work. And so he's treating all sorts of conditions. Juvenile diabetes, he was the first in the world to treat that. Here are three more of his patients. Amy Daniels here on the left had a condition called systemic sclerosis. The skin and the lines of the organs start to harden, including the lungs. And eventually it becomes hard to breathe. It can be fatal. This is one year after being treated, and she was telling us, well, now I can raise my arms over my head and yell at my kids and chase them around, and she's doing fine. <laughs> Barry Gowdy in the middle was treated for multiple sclerosis five and a half years ago and has had no symptoms since. Now some of the patients just stabilized. Barry actually came back pretty much to a full recovery. Jill Rosen was treated for a condition called lupus where your immune system starts attacking lots of different organs in the body. This was two years after her adult stem cell treatment. Her own cells again. She didn't have any symptoms. This was a story I actually mentioned before Claudio Castillo. This came out and actually made some news in the media a few months ago. A young lady that lives in Spain about to lose her lung because of TB. And they grew a new windpipe and just transplanted it in, grew it with her own adult stem cells. And uh, within a week, I think she was out of the hospital. And within about a month, she was telling her doctor, well, she was staying up late dancing and going downstairs. You can go to a website called clinicaltrials.gov, clinicaltrials.gov. And if you type stem cell up here in this upper right box, you'll get, actually this is outdated, but it's over 2,000 clinical trials where they're trying this on patients for different diseases. There's a map where you can look for certain diseases, and this is not just for the U.S. They've got sites all over the world that they're monitoring. These are approved trials. The US FDA or other groups have approved them. It does bring up, you need to be careful, because there are charlatans out there who will ask you to pay lots of money to come for a stem cell treatment and promise all these sorts of things. You need to find out, do they have any sort of backup? Do they have an approval from an official medical body? Do they have any published evidence that what they're doing actually works? Not just testimonials. So people need to be careful when they talk about this. But it's the adult stem cells, again, that are doing all of these treatments. I like this cartoon because I think it shows what's really going on. It says that the embryonic stem cell flight school, and you can see the flight suit that this guy has on, is going, you can either tempt fate in one of these death traps, or I'll show you the future of aviation. And that's the real situation, then, in terms of embryonic versus adult. Bottom line, if we care about the patients first, we're going to focus on adult stem cells, because they actually work, not just in the lab dish or the lab rat, but they work in the patients. Thousands of lives improved because of adult stem cells. And that's without tumors. And that's without the transplant rejection. And that's without having to destroy any human lives to get those cells. Thank you very much.